But for me, I had to like go back to square one. And it was a time when the jobs that I had to do did not merit the education I had acquired. So, you know, you would expect to get an office job. Okay, Azuma, welcome to the Duke Token podcast. It's a really a great pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much, Julius, and it's a pleasure to also be here as well to have this conversation with you, and I hope it goes well. Thank you. Fantastic. So Azuma is someone that I met at church, a friend that I made at church, and we've been friends ever since. And yeah, he's such a lovely person and yeah and you'll find that out during this podcast actually so yeah okay so great so Azuma if you can kindly sort of introduce yourself and tell people what you do for a living. Sure so my name again is Azuma I'm from Ghana I was born in the UK but I left here when I was about two going on three and I spent most of my life in Ghana. So that's where I grew up. Hence my accent. It's not too English. I then went to work to the US to do my first degree. And I came back to the UK 2016 to do law. And I've been on that journey since. And I'm currently now a trainee solicitor at an international firm in the city, hoping to qualify to be a fully fledged lawyer soon. So that's a little about me. Oh, that's fantastic. That's great. I mean, I've also had someone on the podcast that's also sort of looking to go that reign, like in terms of being an aspiring mm-hmm. system. And like I mentioned to, to him, I'd also say to you, like, it's really good to sort of see ambitious people like mm-hmm. doing that career, especially as it's quite a busy career and, you know, it, uh, you know, longevity and stuff like that, you get rewarded as well. And it's such a great opportunity for you to take to be a solicitor and to help and deal with clients and Kate and a lot of cases. So that's fantastic. Okay, great. So we're at the point of the podcast where it's the due token story. So mm-hmm. this is where if you have sort of like an opportunity you like to share, or it could be a story, actually, it's in the title, a story that you'd like mm-hmm. to share to the audience, or it could be a great experience that you've been through that will benefit the audience watching. So take it away, Azuma. Sure. Thank you, Julius. So in terms of this segment of the podcast, tied again to my law journey, and I've told this previously, but I feel like it could serve some people who listen. Um, The broad theme of this story is that there's glory in rejection. There's beauty in the struggle. And I say that because, you know, as I said, I'm now training to be a lawyer. You know, God, God being so good by his grace, I'm now in this position. But if I look back, it wasn't always like this. And those who know me know that is very much the case. And I say that because, as I alluded to earlier, I did my law degree. I came over in 2016, finished my law degree in 2018. And I'm sure, as you are aware of, you know, it's a huge, it's pretty much the hunger games to get a training contract in the city. So in that year of 2018, I applied to a good number of firms, at least 10 got straight rejections from all from all the firms. So obviously, you know, I had to go back to the drawing board, unemployed, no training contract. And the year after my law degree, you know, that's where most people go do the LPC, go get some fancy experience, get a nice job, you know, make use of that law degree. But for me, I had to like go back to square one. And it was a time when the jobs that I had to do did not merit the education I had acquired so you know you would expect to get an office job you know if you go to uni as as anyone would as your parents would be in as West African you know young young adults there's always that expectation but in my case just to survive I had to do all the odd jobs work in restaurants work in kitchens to work in kitchens wash 
pots and pans, place work in stadiums, Wembley, Craven Cottage. Like, you know, I did all those jobs, you know, those not so glamorous, not so fancy, not jobs that you would go, you know, brag into your friends, oh, I work at this firm, this bank. That wasn't the case for me because this was me just trying to, you know, stay afloat in London, get money to pay my rent. Yeah. Whilst I, you know, kept applying for these trading contracts. And it's funny how things always work out because in that same year, you know, it may not be so obvious to you or to listeners, but I do stammer and it was really bad growing up. Yeah. But, you know, I've now been able to manage it. I now know how to work on it. And that year that I had to, you know, grind and hustle, that was the first year that I also took time to go for speech therapy and even work on my stammer and just know how to manage it, know how to accept it, know how to deal with it. And now when I speak, often people tell me that, oh, they don't even detect that I stammer. But I do stammer, but I just know how to manage it. So all those things happened in that year. 2018, 2019, you know, that was a pivotal year. And tied on to what I do right now to be a trainee lawyer, I kept applying to these law firms, you know, sending application after application whilst I was grinding, whilst I was grinding, doing all these jobs. Mm-hmm. And the firm that I'm currently in, they gave me an opportunity. So they gave me an, an interview for the, va- for the vacation scheme, which for all non-law folks is uh, is an internship. So this was to happen in the summer of 2019. So mm-hmm. by his grace, I was able to do it in that interview and then get a spot on that internship for summer 2019. So this was for two weeks. And in the second week, so for each week, we, we do a, pr- a practice area. So in my second week, the supervising lawyer that I was meant to sit under, she happened to be the graduate's at the time, the graduate recruitment partner of the firm. So she was one who was meant to supervise me. And before she met me, she told me she had gone through my application. Mm -hmm. And then these law firm applications to get get the the vacation scheme, you have to cite your work experience. So whether it's a non-law or law. And in my case, you know, just to show those soft skills, because these firms say, you know, have certain skills. I then cited these experiences I had acquired in this year, you know, working in restaurants, you know, working in stadiums, you know, doing these, you know, blue color jobs, which are not glamorous, but they through which you can gain these soft skills. Mm. And it happened that, you know, I cited that, oh, I've worked in Craven Cottage, serving food to spectators, doing blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's, 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 really, it's, it was, in, it's, it's interesting because this same supervisor lawyer just happened to be a fan of Fulham. Now, okay. Fulham play at Craven Cottage. Okay. And just from that one line that she read on this application, that was the connecting point. That was what, that's what we bonded over because she just happened to be a fan of Fulham and I just happened to work in Craven Cottage. So in me seeing all this, it just goes to show that every experience matters. Every, like every opportunity you get, whether it's glamorous or not, whatever the case may be, at the time you may be doing it, it may not be fancy. No one may be hating you. But that exactly may be the experience that leads you to the next level. That creates the, the opportunities for you. That opens the doors for you. And in that case, working in a stadium is what connected me to this graduate recruitment partner who we then built, who I was able to then build good chemistry with, do good work for, impress her. And she just happened to have a huge voice in deciding who would get offered a training contract because she was a training principal. So mm-hmm. how things aligned and again, tied into, you know, taking that year to work on my stammer, go for speech therapy. Mm -hmm. I was obviously then better equipped to go on this internship, you know, be my authentic self, tell people about the fact that I have a stammer and there's no problem. And I think it made me appear more genuine and more authentic as compared to the equally as qualified interns who were on that vacation scheme. So just, you know, how things align when, you know, you go through through the struggle and it gives you the time to really work on yourself, to improve yourself, get experience, whether it's glamorous or not, mm. because that exactly would what is what would propel you to that next stage. It it really showed that, yeah, like, you know, you must just always, always stay positive, no matter what, because anything you're going through, there's always some benefit to it. And that's what I like to say. So yeah, there's beauty, there's beauty in the struggle. Any experience is good experience no matter but it's just based on how you on how you approach it and in my case that's what 
helped me to where I'm at right now. So that's my story. Do you know what Azuma? Yeah, that that is an amazing. <laughs> Honestly, I'm I'm being real. Like that was an amazing story. I'm not even gonna, yes, you know, add anything. You know, <laughs> to that to be honest. <laughs> But what I would say is that that is going to inspire people that mm. are applying for jobs mm. like as a, you know, just applying for a training contract, mm. you know, mm. Mm. on the LPC mm. and people that feel like they're not going to have any chance to compete in, mm. amongst other people, especially those that are different to other people that think I'm mm. um, not because the, these um sort of law magic circle law firms are just going to really like want the brain like the brainiest sort of mm-hmm. people to but mm-hmm. like you're living proof i mean mm-hmm. you are smart don't get me wrong you mm-hmm. are smart mm-hmm. but you're living proof that you you are you're, you're you're different to others but you can still sort of get that winning training contract mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. make a difference within every experience counts mm-hmm. every experience you know, counts. including yeah. cape craven cottage you can meet per- someone that's a full in- fan and who is mm-hmm. in that law firm and who's mm-hmm. a senior law, you know, yeah. trainee, trainee principal, like you said. I mean, not trainee principal, sorry. A principal within the firm, yeah. you know, like, it's amazing. And it, it just reminds me as well, like, experience is key. Like, but exactly. you just never know that person that you've gained that experience with or has, mm-hmm. similar, you know, has worked there before. Something in connection with it can look at that and be like, oh, OK, I like this person he's different or she's different so yeah man wonderful story that is really really great really really great good one good one good one okay so what are your plans you probably know what it what mm. is already but what are your plans mm. in the future and um also where, where do you see yourself in like five years time as well okay, sure so in terms of plans for the future like in the short term near by future it's obviously to finish my training contract strongly because I'm in my final seats and I qualify this September. So finish strongly and God willing qualify at my firm and become a project finance lawyer because that's what I'm leaning towards. So that's a plan for the future. And yeah, just become a project finance lawyer. And aside my profession, I'll just really want to just become the best version of myself you know, just, you know, live, live an authentic, carefree, peaceful life full of purpose. Mm. And this again ties into my, you know, where I see myself in the next five years. Honestly, I just want to be living a blessed life. Mm. And when I say a blessed life, a life full of peace, Mm. happiness, purpose, for fulfillment, you know, those like, that's key for me, just peace and fulfillment and just being happy and just you know being gen- genuinely at peace not that type where you know it's like you put up front in public but in private you're going through so much chaos or anxieties or worries or insecurities or fears i just how i am indoors when it's just me i would want to take that same image outside so just be able to live a blessed life and be able to know that you know in five years time i am really becoming all that God has destined me to become. I am really fulfilling my true potential and just, you know, being able to impact people wherever I am, live with purpose and just, you know, be able to spread love because as Christians, you know, you know, you know, we go to church and but like it's just it's more than just church. It's really about just being able to take that character, take your faith wherever you are. And it, and it doesn't mean me or us you know having to be the most holy person but just being someone that you know impacts positively wherever i am and just being able to spread love you know be of good influence so just yeah that's ideally is where i want to find myself in five years time and obviously you know we are men we are young adults it would be nice to you know be able to live that way with a life partner with a partner and purpose you know, mm. have a family be prosperous yeah. Be financially yeah. free, stable, in, in, independent, enjoy life, you know, all, all that good stuff. But yeah. at the core yeah. of it, I would just want to live a genuinely blessed life. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I agree. So I've got nothing more to add on that mm. point. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Everything you said of you, man. <laughs> 
Okay, cool. So now we come to the part of the due token vote. So this is where that if you've got something simply that irritates mm. you that you'd love to sort mm. of lock away, you know, forever. So yeah, so over to you, Azuma. So is there anything that irritates you that you'd love to lock away in the vault forever? Uh, Julius, this this is an interesting question because I mean, in the current world we live in, there are so many things or, or, or aspects of current world culture that are frankly just annoying. But I'll say <laughs> largely the whole concept of external validation is what does not sit too well with me because you know like and and when i say that specifically obviously social media now social media is good you know there are, there are great things about it you know it's useful you get great education you're able to keep in touch with friends and family but when i say external validation through social media mm. that the aspect of it that i find annoying that i want to lock away forever is when for instance when you go for events and then you know, like let's say a concert or a match or or in, like any form of large gathering, and then instead of people enjoying the moment, so like soaking in the music or the performance or whatever they went there to observe or do, you just see people on their phones filming the whole thing, up, uploading their stories throughout, as opposed <laughs> to like just soaking in and being present. Like there's a there's just that lack of be impressed yeah. be mindful and i just find it so annoying because uh, you go all the way there mm. just to show your friends that oh i'm at this event look at me having fun and it's okay if you can take a few pictures or two some footage but not the whole mm. performance or whole concert which you see with some people and it's like you can tell that fine you know it's nice that you're at that event but at the core of it you can tell that those are the very same people who need great deal great great bouts of extent of validation they, 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 those are the same ones that like to prove to their friends that oh they are living a good life you know they are enjoying themselves which should never be the case because honestly in an ideal world we should not really seek to impress people mm. i feel like rather we should just seek to be our true authentic self which i kind of alluded to in my story because yeah like you know we all have value we all have sig- significance and you don't have to prove it to someone or to some people that oh through this I should be looked at in a in a higher light. So yeah, just that whole you know just that whole need to constantly validate yourself externally, especially through social media is what I find and un- find annoying. In mm-hmm. a way, it would be nice if that was if there was less of that in the world. <laughs> yeah, and mm-hmm. people would just live freely and not have to prove themselves or like show that mm-hmm. they are enjoying themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 it's interesting because that used to be me. So oh. I don't want to sound too hypocritical because you know we've all been through those stages. But I feel like now that I'm older, I I, I see things a bit clearer. Yeah. So which why yeah I understand it, but I feel like you know if there was less of that, you know people were just more present and less you know absent-minded or less you know fixated on on broadcasting a certain lifestyle. Mm. That would just be better for everyone else yeah that's interesting because i'm not going to mention mm. i want i want i want to encourage um, <laughs> to watch the pod but someone else actually mentioned uh social media but he mentioned mm. it in a different context but if you want to find out what he said people are like in exactly relation, you gotta watch it in it i'm not gonna <laughs> exactly that's it that, <laughs> that, means that, missed, that means you missed an episode <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that that is really good, actually. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, because you want to go there and just enjoy the rent. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. okay to take a couple, maybe of pictures, a couple of quick snap, snappy Mm -hmm. videos. That's it. That's that's fine. Yeah, soaking the atmosphere. In fact, Mm -hmm. I got I went to a few uh football matches and Mm -hmm. I I did take a few pictures and stuff. I saw, I saw, yeah. I think you see you see Yeah, I saw I saw those pictures, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then after a while, it's like you want to take the atmosphere in. Exactly. So like, I stopped and then I just literally, you know, I took that makes sense. And then yeah. stop and you're just soaking mm-hmm. that, soaking the game and stuff like that. Because otherwise, it's just going to, 
you know, it, like, it will pass. It will pass you by. It, it's yeah. it's like you're there, but you're really not there. It's like yeah, you want to have all the footage and upload your stories and give all the captions and yeah, yeah it's like yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, that's a great one. That's a great one. That's that's good. That is really, really interesting. Okay. <laughs> Wow, it's gone quick. It's gone yeah. quick. Yeah, it's, it's actually gone, gone really fast. Gone. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. gone really, really quick. Okay. Yeah. At this point, I would like to say and um, thank you, um, Azuma, for joining the um, as well. uh, Token podcast. No worries. No, once again, this is at this point, I'm going to say, like, if you're interested in joining the Token podcast, mm-hmm. feel free to reach out to me and I can, we can do it, you know, a pod. Um, you can share your views. You can share your story. Uh, or experience you've been through you know something that irritates you etc but yeah just re- feel free to reach out to me but it's i would like to say thank you azuma once again for joining the podcast um, thank you Julius. Uh, it's been a pleasure to come here and you know share some insights and have this conversation with you thanks for inviting me yeah no worries man yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. fantastic why did i say <laughs> fantastic <laughs>